Good day everyone, welcome back to English with Hieronimo. So today we're going to discuss about sentence structure, sentence types, and uh, we're just going to focus on the four sentence types. So today we're going to um, tackle about a single or sorry simple sentence, compound sentence, complex sentence and compound complex sentence so we're just going to focus with this four so there are basic elements of every sentence there is a subject and a predicate to complete the sentence so the basic elements here is the subject let's have an example mary is a subject and our predicate is plays tennis so mary plays tennis now let's proceed first with a simple sentence in a simple sentence, the simple sentence has one subject and one predicate. So always remember that one subject and one predicate. Let's have an example. We went to San Juan. So let's find our sentence. How do we um, identify each of the words here in our sentence? So we here is our simple subject and it is a pronoun. When is a verb, the San Juan is a prepositional phrase and it is also considered as the predicate. Now, subject Mary, predicate is place tennis. So, let's have here two um, subjects, Tom and Mary, play tennis would be our predicate. So, Tom and Mary, and it could also be having... A two simple predicate so place tennis and swim simple predicate with compound subject so Tom and Mary play tennis so Tom and Mary is our compound subject now with the simple sentence with compound subject and compound predicate Tom and Mary play tennis and swim so, as you've noticed, there we used end as our conjunction. So, let's proceed to the compound sentence. In a compound sentence, it has more than one part that can stand alone or it is called also as independent clause. Independent clauses are connected by coordinating conjunctions, conjunctive adverbs, or a semicolon. So, let's have some example. We went to San Juan, comma, and most of us danced all night. So let's identify the words that we have here in a sentence. So we is the subject, went is the verb, to San Juan is a prepositional phrase. So we went to San Juan. So went to San Juan is a predicate. And we use the coordinating conjunction and most of us is the subject. Dance is a verb and all night here is another modifying phrase which concludes that dance all night is also our predicate in the sentence. So compound sentence use of coordinating conjunction. Now in example here we use the conjunction and. So in the compound subject there are two subjects and two predicates. So subject and predicate and subject and predicate. So let's have an example. Tom swims and Mary plays tennis. So as you've noticed, we have two different independent clauses. So usually in a compound sentence, coordinating conjunctions can be easier to memorize. Just memorize the word fun boys. F for A and N nor B but O R Y yet S. So, so, always remember fun boys. Compound sentence, coordinating conjunction. So, let's have here Tom swims and Mary plays. Compound sentence with coordinating conjunctions is Tom swims and Mary plays tennis. Now, comma before and in compound sentences. Now, here we use and as our coordinating conjunction. Now, also in a compound sentence, conjunctive adverbs can be used. Moreover, however, otherwise, therefore. So, these are some of the common conjunctive adverbs. Now, 
um, in a conjunctive adverb. Now, let's have here a simple sentence. Bob is handsome. Moreover, he is rich. So, we have here two independent clauses. So, Bob is handsome is the first one. He is rich is the second independent clause. Now, Bob is handsome. Moreover, he is rich. So, please take note that the semicolon before conjunctive adverb and comma after conjunctive adverb. Just take a look at the conjunctive adverb that we used. Now, conjunctive adverbs are sometimes called floating adverbs because they can be positioned at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end of a clause. So, let's take a look at some of the examples using floating adverbs. So, let's have here, Bob is handsome, moreover, he is rich. So, it is placed in the beginning. Bob is handsome, he is moreover rich. It is in the middle. Bob is handsome, he is rich moreover at the end of the sentence. So, let's proceed with the next slide. So, semicolons, if the relation between the ideas expressed in the main classes is very close and obvious, without a conjunction, we can separate the clauses with a semicolon. So, this reference can be found in Little Brown Handbook 9th edition, page 361. So, in a compound sentence with semicolon, let's have example. Tom has benefited from his exercise program. He is slim and energetic. So, let's proceed to our type, another type of sentence. We have the complex sentence. Now, a complex sentence has at least two parts. One that can stand alone and another one that cannot stand alone. The part that cannot stand alone is linked to the rest of the sentence by a subordinating conjunction. So, let's have an example of this so that you could um, be more familiar with this one. So, since my boyfriend and I wanted to have fun, we went to San Juan. Since here is our subordinating conjunction, we wanted to have fun is a part that cannot stand alone. So, we is another subject. When to San Juan yesterday is a predicate. So, as you can notice, there is one independent clause and one dependent clause. So, in a complex sentence, subject and a predicate connected by a subordinating conjunction even though Subject, another subject, and another predicate to complete a com complex sentence. Now, let's have an example. Bob is popular even though he is ugly. So, here in our example of the complex sentence, we can use subordinating conjunctions. The most common subordinating conjunctions are after, although, as, because, before, how, if, once, since, then, that, though, till, until, when, where, whether, and while. So, in a complex sentence, subordinating conjunctions, let's have here a sentence, Bob is popular even though he is ugly. So, we have here clause 1 as the independent clause. Bob is popular. In our clause 2 is the dependent clause. He is ugly. Even though Bob is ugly, he is popular. So, we also have here clause 1 as the dependent clause. And clause 2 is our independent clause. Bob is ugly is the dependent. He is popular is the independent clause. Now, the last type of sentence is the compound complex sentence. Now, a compound complex sentence, this type of sentence has more than one part that can stand alone 
and at least ones that cannot. Conjunctions link the different parts of this sentence. So let's have it um, more further so that you would easily understand this. So since we wanted to have fun, my boyfriend and I went to San Juan yesterday and we danced all night. So notice the sentence we have here, since as our subordinating conjunction, we wanted to have fun is a part that cannot stand alone or since we wanted to have fun is the dependent clause. My boyfriend and I is the subject, went to San Juan is the predicate. And we used coordinating conjunction and we danced all night is another predicate. So as you have noticed, we have one dependent clause and two independent clause. Let's have another one. Mike is popular because he is good looking, but he is not very happy. So as you've noticed here in the sentence now, uh, tell, let's have another exercise so that the uh, we could um, see if you really understood our types of sentences. So please identify whether it's simple, compound, complex, or compound, complex. Now let's have sentence number one. The bell rang. Number two. Bridget ran the first part of the race. And Tara biked the second part. Number three. He stands at the bottom of the cliff while the climber moves up the rock. Number four, the skier turned and jumped. And number five, Naoki passed the test and he studied hard and understood the material. So I'll give you a time to answer what type of sentence is it. So the answers are one is a simple sentence, number two is a compound sentence, number three is a complex sentence, number four is another simple sentence, and five is compound complex. Now let's have another one. Number one, because Kyla has so much climbing experience, we asked her to lead our group. Number two, you and I need piano lessons. Number three, I planned to go to the hockey game, but I couldn't get tickets. Number four, Dorothy likes white water rafting, but she also enjoys kayaking. Number five, there are many problems to solve before this program can be used, but engineers believe that they will be able to solve them soon. So I'll give you time to answer. So the answers are number one is a complex sentence, number two is a simple sentence, number three is a compound sentence, and four is another compound sentence, and lastly five is a compound complex sentence. So my reference are here in this book, as you can see, from Writing Academy English, second edition, and also the Little Brown Handbook. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe my channel, English with Jerome Nemo, to get more updates on new videos and learn more English. See you soon.